For one year, the world has been riveted by the war between Israel and the Hamas terrorist group based in Gaza. It was from Gaza that the uh, attack on Israel flooded into southern Israel, breaking through the barriers, slaughtering thousands, and taking over 200 hostages back into Gaza, prompting Israel to go through that very dense urban area, really house by house, and much more terrifying, the tunnels dug underneath it. But always in the background was the fact that this was just part of the the circle of iron and rocket that had surrounded Israel, much of it masterminded and strategized and coordinated by Iran. Yes, Hamas was in control of Gaza on the southwest side of the country, but the north was under threat by another terrorist group called Hezbollah, also deeply connected to Iran. And in many ways more terrifying, it was said that Hezbollah had 100,000 rockets, 100,000. And even if 99% of those are shot down or even go awry, you send 100,000 of anything, you're going to punch through enough to cause terrifying carnage. And so it was a startling thing just a week or so ago when news came of a spy craft tactic that is straight out of the Jason Bourne movies. Hezbollah leadership, which were told to downgrade their tech. They were told not to use smartphones because Israel could hack into them. They were told, let's use old-fashioned beeper technology. That way Israel can't hack and snoop around. Thousands of these beepers were distributed to the Hezbollah leadership. But then in one moment, all the beepers went off at the same time. And every one of these Hezbollah terrorists picked up their beeper to look at it, either to read it in front of their face or to have it in their pocket. And thousands of them exploded. An explosive charge had been sneaked into the beepers by, one presumes, according to reports, Israeli intelligence. And so in one fell swoop, the intimately precise targeting of thousands of Hezbollah leaders, some of whom were killed, many of whom were grievously injured, and in a moment, Hezbollah was thrown into disarray. That was followed quickly by precision airstrikes on other Hezbollah leaderships, Hezbollah leaders. The organizational chart for so much of the terrorist group has been obliterated. Well, that's the good news if you are on the pro-Israel, pro-democracy side. It's an outrage if you're on the anti-Israel side, as too many seem to be. I see that our own prime minister has put out a statement asking for both sides to de-escalate, as if Israel, the democracy, and Hezbollah, the terrorist group, are on par with each other, are morally equivalent, as if Justin Trudeau himself would negotiate with terrorists. I note that when Russia invaded Ukraine, Justin Trudeau did not call for negotiation or de-escalation. He flew to Kiev, donated billions of dollars of Canadian money, as well as military equipment and training. He's never called for a negotiated settlement. He has outrightly rejected it. Why is Israel required to negotiate and de-escalate with a terrorist group? And why has it taken a year for Justin Trudeau to speak about this? For a year, Israel's north has been abandoned. 80,000 citizens forced to move from their homes because of a continuous low-level rocket assault on that part of the world. Well, now Israel seems to be digging in even further and going in for the kill against Hezbollah. There are reports that Israel may actually launch a ground invasion. So much is happening at once. And we need someone who has been studying this subject for decades to help us make sense of it. Who better to turn to than Dr. Daniel Pipes, the boss of the Middle East Forum, who joins us now via Skype. Dr. Pipes, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us on this very busy day. You too, Ezra.
Now, I tried to summarize some of the things that are going on. Before we go any further, did I get my facts more or less straight there? Did I leave out an important factor? Um, I just thought it was an astonishing thing, this beeper attack. Imagine putting a, a, a bomb in the, literally the hands of thousands of your enemy's commanders. Just one of the, one of the most amazing acts of spycraft I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, <laughs> it took everyone by surprise. Uh, the only correction I make is that uh, Hamas did not kill thousands in Israel. It killed an estimated 1,200. Oh, thank you. For Otherwise, the spot on. Yeah. Let's let's talk about what's happening in, in Lebanon. Uh, I, I was terrified of Hezbollah just from the raw numbers. And even if they're low-tech missiles and don't aim that well, well, that's sort of the point. It makes it even more terrifying, in fact, than if these were precision munitions that would be fired at the at the military. Um, it feels like, in a way, a preemptive attack, just like Israel had a preemptive attack on Arab nations during the Six-Day War. All these Arab nations were amassing their armies. They had kicked out um, the United Nations. Israel made the move first, wiping out their air forces before they could attack. It feels like that's what Israel's done here. The sneak attack was not through an air force. It was through the beepers, and the air forces come in. Do you think, how badly do you think Hezbollah is degraded, and how badly do you think their chain of command has been smashed? It looks to me that the steps the Israelis have taken in recent days are quite effective. On the one hand, the pager and walkie-talkie explosions. On the second hand, the targeted assassination of senior Hamas, sorry, Hezbollah figures. And on the third hand, uh, the destruction of missile launchers. Can't do much with missiles if you don't have the launchers. So it looks like uh, Hezbollah is not as strong as it was a couple of weeks ago. Now, it also appears that the Iranians, the leadership in Tehran, is worried that it's losing its Hezbollah asset, the Hezbollah asset that is, in fact, protecting Iran to some extent. So I would imagine there's a lot of disconcertion in the circles of Hezbollah and of the Isra Iranian Islamic Republic as to what to do next, go full force against Israel or not. Uh, I imagine there's very intensive discussions this is a very big decision for Hezbollah, possibly the biggest ever in its over slightly over 40-year history. Wow. Now, Israel has invaded Lebanon on the ground several times before for similar reasons. And I, I think that after a while, those wars become, I mean, if the troops are entrenched there, the, the, the soldiers are at risk, political uh, intensity in Israel declines. And, and I'm not sure how sustainable a ground invasion of a foreign country would be for Israel. Do you think it's likely that they will invade on the ground, or do you think it's more just to go in and to root out some of these subterranean launch facilities, and then they'll move right back out? Like, who, who will fill the vacuum if Israel goes in and then comes right out? Actually, I think it's not of those. Uh, let me contrast Israel's war against Hamas with Israel's war against Hezbollah. Hamas is a Palestinian organization solely determined to destroy the state of Israel. It has no other purpose. It cannot do anything else. And therefore, Israel has determined a year ago, uh, repeated many times by the prime minister and others, that it intends to destroy Hamas. It wants nothing left of Hamas. Now, whether it can achieve that or not, I can't tell you. It's done a pretty good job, but it's not fully finished. Uh, but destruction, the ending of Hamas's existence is the goal. And therefore, a ceasefire is very inimical to Israel because it means it can't do that. In contrast, Israel's war on Hezbollah is not to destroy Hezbollah. It is to deter Hezbollah. Hezbollah exists to control Lebanon and Fighting Israel is a side venture, very important venture, but side. Controlling Lebanon is the key. And therefore, the Israelis are not trying to destroy it, not trying to uproot it, but simply get it to stop sending over the missiles and rockets so that the 60,000 or so Israelis in the north of Israel can return. Therefore, ceasefire vis-a-vis -vis Hezbollah 
from the Israeli point of view, is a positive thing. It means the ending of the fighting. And therefore, I don't think the Israelis are inclined to go in en masse with the troops on the ground, but it's trying to send a signal to the Hezbollah leadership that it will do what is necessary, including a ground invasion. It doesn't want to, clearly. But it's showing its muscle, its determination, and hoping that Hezbollah and the Hezbollah leader, or sorry, the Hezbollah uh, bosses in Tehran will conclude better quit now. This is too expensive. This is too draining. Uh, better stop. It was not, in the end, a good idea for Hezbollah to attach its fate to Hamas in Gaza.